Hi, this is Anne uh, with what I hope is a quick anagram on um, compiling and on supporting the um, the diagram that's in page chapter one, page twelve of your textbook. I don't have an electronic copy of that, um, but it's a diagram that shows how your source source program gets compiled into um, an executable and then run. And um, as much as I like uh, Replit as a way to simplify things and allow you to get coding right away and um, just go straight to worrying about your C++ and not worrying about installs and and environments and things like that. I think to some degree uh, it obscures this one point and so I would like to just do a quick demo and uh, maybe make this code available to you to, to try. So um, as a substitute for the diagram in the book um, I have this page from Code Academy. This is a nice little explanation. Um, it's a little different than um, what's in your um, book, actually probably a little bit closer to the development environment I'm going to work in here. But basically it shows your source code getting changed into an executable which can then be run. And um, the, one of the things about the Replit environment for C++ is when you start up, you end up with a main.cpp, and it would appear that you always have to have your ex your primary source code file named that. And it's true that if you want to use this run button, then um, it expects to compile a file named main.cpp that has in it a routine called main, which then is um, actually compiled into an executable file whose name is main without any extension, um, that, the that the run button then runs. And what's a little weird about that is that you don't see this additional file that gets compiled. And I think that's just a bit of simplification. I suspect it's there. In fact, I'm certain it's there. If I go over here, um, and I use this as a Linux terminal, um, which it is, in fact, it is, and I do a dir, I can see that I actually have two files in my folder, main.cpp and main, but the UI, um, the user interface for Replit is not showing me that second file. Um, they seem to be treating it as excess detail. Um, but I would like to just explain what's going on over here. This is a command line compilation where we are running a particular version of, of C++, asking it to produce an output file called main from an input file called main.cpp. And then here we are running the output file called main at from the current folder. So if you've had any, if you spend any time at the Linux command line, this is going to look familiar. If you haven't, um, it's not required. So I'm just going to explain things sort of blow by blow. Um, what I would like to do is, um, first of all, break things and obscure them by creating a new file. And I'm going to, um, I've got the, I've got some source code out of another example from chapter one. So I'm going to make a file called leapyear.cpp. And um, I have over in an editor that you can't see in this window, I don't think, um, a copy of the leap year code. So let me um, get that. And rather than make you watch me type it in, I'm just going to copy it in here. Now, this is the leap year program out of chapter one. Um, and it should work, um, but when I hit the run button, um, it's not, it's, uh, things will start to go wrong. Okay, so we're going to analyze those. And, um, oh, a couple of things here. Um, linker command failed. Um, one thing that's happening is our, clearly the default for how Replit wants to compile things is that it's going to try and compile both or all of the CPP files that it finds in the folder. And you can't have two mains in a single executable. So both of these source code files have a function called main. And in any particular C++ program, you can only have one of those. So um, 
what we're going to do is we're going to compile these two things by hand. Um, we actually probably still already have a, a viable uh, main.output. Let's take a look and see if we do. Okay, so right now we don't have um, an output file, an executable for either one of those. So I'm just going to copy this line. Um, I'll go ahead and type it in. You've watched all my fat fingering. Um, so this is clearly the name of the compiler, clang++-7. Um, my machine just refreshed. I'm not quite sure why that happened. So let me just start over again. There's a flag. Um, I actually don't know what this flag does, and I think it's optional, but let's not worry about it. The dot O creates the output file. So we're going to go ahead and recompile main from main.cpp. And when we only compile one file, we'll have only one main function, and that should create a valid main output. And then again, if I run it from the command line, that will run. Now, by the same token, and I should be able to hit the up arrow here, okay, and change this so I don't have to get all the, the uh, really painful syntax right, to leap year with a capital. Remember that in Linux, um, the file names are case sensitive, so you have to make sure you get your capitalization correct. And we're going to have our output executable be called leap year. So I should be able to also compile that single file by itself. Uh, why did that not work? Oh, I have those backwards. Hang on a sec. There is no input file of leap here. It is the output file that is plain file leap year, and input file is leapyear.cpp. Um, and if I hit enter there, that compiles. Now, what's interesting is the, we fooled the, the user interface. Here, you actually can see the output file. So when this is compiled and we go back to this diagram, we've taken our source code, leapyear.cpp, ask the compiler and linker to do its thing, and we've produced an executable that in this case is called plain old leap year. And by the same token, um, in a Linux command line, I can run that file. Okay. Um, oh, didn't type that right. Um, so it's dot slash, I believe. Okay, and at this point, I'm executing this code where I can enter a single year, and um, the code will decide if it is a leap year or not. So um, let's just type in um, 2020. Okay, it is a leap year. I have to rerun the code, which I'm doing with the up arrow, to try another year because we don't have a loop in here. So 2019 is not a leap year. Um, Year 2000 was an interesting one because generally years divisible by 400 are not, uh, by 100 are not leap years, but years divisible by 400 are. So 2000 is always a fun case. Um, get an extra birthday that year if you are a, um, if you are a leap year baby. And one more, um, just to show you that 1900 was divisible by four, was also divisible by 100, was not divisible by 400, and therefore, is not a leap year. So um, again, the point here is not necessarily to get into the details of leap years. It is to talk about the fact that um, when you hit the run button, Replit is going to want to find a main.cpp. It is going to want to find a single main function inside there, and it will generate a file called main that is the executable file and will run it. That all happens without your help if you just hit the run button. If your source code is not named main.cpp or you have more than one um, main file in your folder and project, you have to work at the command line. And I'm not expecting 
us to do that, at least not right away. We may later um, have more complicated projects where we need to do that. But I didn't want the way that Replit is making your life simple to make the, the um, page 12 diagram that looks like this make no sense at all. So just wanted to help with that. Um, I hope this has been useful and um, talk to you again soon.